Would you know how to get rid of your fear, phobia, stress or anxiety? How to burst your fear and transform your life? Welcome to Fear Buster Show, presented by Lauren Rosenberg, fear and phobia relief expert and author of How to Move Forward When the Unthinkable Happens. You are listening to UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio with Lauren Rosenberg www.fear-busters.com Welcome back to Fear Buster. This is Lauren Rosenberg and my I have a special guest today, April. April has a certain particular fear, that uh, fear of eyes, um, in, in a certain particular way. So she's going to talk to us about it. And also she has a lovely job, but we will talk about it later and lest you want to guess what she does. So um, hi, April. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, April, what's the, um, what's the fear? What's this fear of eyes? Um, I'm, uh, I'm afraid of eyes. I can't um, look at somebody if they hurt their eye. I can't touch my own eye. Um, just generally, it makes me feel quite sick. Okay, and since when? When did that start? I would say it started in my mid twenties. I would say when I had a friend who he worked down the pit in the in a coal mine, mm-hmm. and he me one day and he said, "Can you come and pick me up? I need to go to the hospital." And he'd been sent home from work, and he'd got a number of large things like little like big and small bits in his eye from the, you know, from the pet and everything. And so I took him to the hospital and he said, well, would I stay with him? Which I did. And this doctor came and he put his head in a clamp and then he put his eye in some sort of clamp thing. So you stayed with him? So you stay yeah, and you watched all this? Yeah, I stayed with him. It was just the most awful thing. And then he... He put like some drops in, which obviously enlarged the pupil. And then he proceeded to 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 say to, to my friends, "Well, you need to keep very very still." And then he virtually got these things that were like tweezers and proceeded to pick the bits out of mm-hmm. my friend's eye. And I felt physically sick, but you know, my friend was holding my hand very tightly, and it was just the most awful thing. That I could you could see what he was doing. <laughs> when you talk about it, when you talk about it, can you feel something in your in your body or just talking about it? I feel sick just thinking about it. So okay. where do you feel sick? Where do you feel that? Where do you feel this? Because it was horrific to see. Where where do you feel this in your body? Where do you actually feel that feeling in your body? In my stomach. In your stomach? And does that feel heavy? It feels twisty. Twisty. Okay. And if you had to pick a colour to release this twisty feeling in your stomach, what would that be? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know really. Well, it wouldn't be green because that's sick. <laughs> well, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe pink. Pink. Okay. So would you mind me trying to make it a little bit lighter and less vivid so that you don't have that um so we're going to do two things we're going to do a bit of color therapy but we're also going to do a little bit of um, eye movement therapy just to to move the image that, that is so vivid uh a little bit further so it's not still i mean that's how many years ago we're we talking about well that was tw- like 25 years ago but it's i mean it's got worse since then i mean originally I, I you know I just couldn't look at eyes and then I got to where I couldn't touch my own eye I can't I can't put eye drops in I've you know I've got two children and when they were small if they got anything in the eye, then I had to call a neighbor because I I couldn't cope I know it sounds ridiculous no no it's, it, that is what it's the unphobia is you know that. If, if I see anything on tv with eyes I either have to switch it off or I put a blanket over my head <laughs> until mm-hmm. I think that moment has passed. I mean, it's just... So it's, it's really got really it, intense. It has. And we had an incident where we were on holiday in Norfolk and my dog was on the beach and he got jumped on by another dog. 
and we got to the cafe and he was bleeding and it turned out he was bleeding under his eye and luckily my daughter was with me she was like older by then and she had to deal with the dog because I, I just couldn't look at him it was really awful yeah so it has gone it's spread out so basically the fear usually you know a, a fear comes from either something that we've seen or a behavior that we copy but and then gradually it's sort of if it's not being dealt with it's get bigger and bigger and bigger mm. and uh, the subconscious mind doesn't have any any logic and the subconscious mind lives in the present time so that's why your event is still very vivid it doesn't matter if it's 25 years ago it will still be there mm -hmm. so i helped um somebody who had um fear of eyes also and uh and then i helped her because she wanted to wear contact lenses and the way of wearing contact lenses she wanted to get rid of her fear of eyes so we did we, we got rid of the fear of eyes and then she could wear a contact lenses so but um but that would be a sort of pro a problem i presume i mean well, you know i i am short-sighted and i you know i have often thought about the idea but i know i know i couldn't i can't there's no way that i could pull my eye down and have to touch it but honestly i just the whole idea made me feel quite ill yeah so that that's uh <laughs> um but at least you don't have apart from the feeling of feeling sick it, it's not i know it's disturbing and i know it, it's stopping you doing things i had the case of um someone who they actually there was another person who could not look at any eyes otherwise they will actually faint mm. so that was you know, difficult because if you're working somewhere if you're serving someone if you it was just like it was so intense so but let's see what we can do for you today um that feeling in your stomach I feel faint i do feel faint yeah yeah some, sometimes um it's like, like my daughter caught her eye on something and she said could i have a look and well i, I did and then i felt as if i was going to fall on the floor because i had this wave of not just sticking my stomach but as if it was all going to go black and I was going to pass out and I said to her I'm sorry but I don't think I can have a lock I'm going to have to sit on the set too <laughs> it was terrible and that's only recently I know it's uh but that and at least you know exactly where it comes from you have the event you have that um how was your friend afterwards was your friend fine yeah my daughter was yeah she was she was fine but I, I think also you get it's like your your heart like trebles you know mm -hmm. it's a boom, 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 like that yeah and you just can't control it i know because well you can't control it because that is how you have been that program that is the subconscious mind is a it's quite friendly with us and wants to protect us but doesn't have the logic so basically it's going to say okay well i've learned that this is how is dangerous because this is what makes me feel so that's for I should get out of it and that's why those 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 feeling that you feel in your body makes you want to run away from it and that's the whole point of the subconscious mind doing that but obviously it's not helping us because logically that's not what we want so so let's try to see okay so what would like if that's okay with you what we can do is try to shift that little that feeling in your stomach and also maybe try to do a little bit of uh, eye movement therapy to dis distance that um that image that you have in your mind that's very vivid so if you want we can try and do a little bit of this so um so if you, you know just sit comfortably and if you want to take a deep breath and let's just breathe in and breathe out and then if you want to close your eyes and imagine that there is this nice pink cloud above your head and that nice pink cloud, it's almost like a, a pink shower. It's starting raining and you see that nice pink going into your mind, going down into your throat, going right down into your stomach and that pink is going to go in where that green is, lifting, making that green lighter and lighter and lighter and smaller and smaller so light and so small that it'll just flow and it'll just go somewhere else or it may come out to your mouth you may find that you need to yearn it may come out to your fingers to your feet just see a nice pin going in lifting making lighter and lighter and lighter at the same time tell your mind that you're safe that you're 
you know, you, nothing's going to happen to you. See, that's nice being going in, lifting, making it lighter and lighter and lighter. So light and so soft, they'll just flow and it'll just go wherever it needs to get. And then notice what I feel like in your stomach. And then whenever you're ready, just take a deep breath and then you can just open your eyes. So April, now thinking about it and talking about this event, what's that feel like in your stomach? Is it still the same? Is it a little bit different? Is it a little bit more digestible in that sense, that event? I'm not sure, really. Okay, not sure is a good answer because before you were very precise and you would have kept going and talking about it. So that's a good sign. Okay, what's left? What's that feeling still, thinking about it? What's the feeling in your body? No, because you know it is it's still stressful mm -hmm. it, it, the, the problem is we're only talking about it hypothetically but yeah, of course if i was faced with you know an eye injury what, for example when um i was a teacher for a very long time and i was a first aider at school so you can imagine this could be a problem. And we had an agreement amongst the first aid team that if somebody had something hanging off and was bleeding profusely, then I was the person to go to. But if they had anything to do with their eyes at all, then I was not to be counted on. Okay. <laughs> so that really, that event really had an impact on you. Yeah. 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 So what I would like you to do, if that's okay with you, um, do you have the image in your mind? Do you have one out of that episode? Do you have a particular image that, that let's try, not as, not as the scarier one, but one that is not great, but not the worst one out of that episode? Out of the same episode? or a Yes, the, the same one. The same one. Okay. Yeah, so what I would like you to do is move your eyes from, look, without, without moving your head, literally looking on the right corner and the left corner, thinking of that image, keep your image in your mind, and then down, left, down, right, and then almost do like half a circle of your eyes, just literally go up like that, and then, and then keep thinking of the image, and then... Imagine I was doing like a figure eight in front of you and you would just follow your follow. And then just take a deep breath. And then think of the image again. And is that slightly different? Is it less colorful or has that something changed a little bit? Mm, I would say not really. I just feel sick. <laughs> Okay, fine. So that feeling, okay. So that feeling, okay. What color do you need to get rid of it? I need a total wipeout. <laughs> okay, so just, I'll tell you what. No, white's not good. Not White's not good because that's the color in your eyeball. So that's no good. Ah, so that's also, so that actually, so do you ever wear white? Never. Never. So that would be, um, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I could get rid of all this, but it we would need not definitely non air and we would need uh, a few hours just to get rid of it. But uh, what is interesting, especially for, you know, for our listeners is how a certain particular fear can go into even not wearing a color or, you know, white. Um, I, I helped a little boy who um, had a particular color that he didn't like. And unfortunately, the same color was his uniform. So he couldn't wear his uniform. <laughs> it was bad luck. It was, you know, it was purple. And and the school jumper was purple. So, <laughs> so poor, poor little boy. Can you imagine uh, being surrounded by um, the color that you don't like in school? <laughs> That's not the best to start and learn. So, um, but what's interesting is we don't always associate the fear to what we really are scared of and sometimes when it's not dealt with it will go into something else and you in it, sp it spread and then looking at not wearing white that's another step 
onto the, the height, onto the fear in that sense, because mm -hmm. it's spreading in different ways. So, um, but um, um, obviously we can't quite do it um, now, but I remember therapy um, is one of the, I think, really, really good um, tools to literally delete the image in your mind. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that would, um, I would have to basically, you would have to follow the movement that I do and there's a whole process uh mm -hmm. to do that um what we're trying to do just now is just to relax a little bit more but and because it's eye movement therapy in a way and because it's moving the eyes and and your that's the feel of the eye is not the best in certain ways so there would be something else to do beforehand in order to put you in a good place and then um delete the image but it's quite nice to know that there are, that eye movement therapy is a therapy that delete the image in your mind that you don't want the unwanted images or just put them further away or fade them so that you don't have to you don't have that vivid image in your mind at the moment this image is very much in your memory and what it does is the minute that you have a similar same scenario it would come up again and that's that's why it's important to not have to mm. you know to not have it so vivid in the mind Definitely. but um the color therapy is quite good because you can send a color to shift this. So um, that's quite a nice way of shifting the feeling inside. Um, but uh, obviously, that will be more work to be done in that because that's. Mm. Uh, but um, what you can do is have you ever tried to take deep breaths when, when you're actually into that fear and? And doing even pressure points you can even do um have you ever heard of um tapping pressure points no so so what you can do is acupuncture like acupuncture without needles and there are certain pressure points on your head and on your front head and between the eye next to the eye underneath the eye underneath your nose underneath your mouth and on the collarbone that will literally calm your whole system down and as you actually into the fear, you can even do it. We can, you can try just thinking, just thinking of that feeling that you have in your stomach now, just because that feeling sick. So what you would do is you tap top of your head, and then you got point right to the middle of your front head, and then between the eye, and then next to the eye, and then underneath the eye, and underneath your nose. And obviously, if this is like something that you would, wouldn't feel comfortable because it's near the eye, then you could just skip that one and just go straight underneath your nose mm. and then underneath your mouth and then your collarbone. And then at the same time, what you could do is, what is it that I need right now with, that, with, with this event? And then you will say, okay, I need more. What would you, what would you, would you need when your daughter or the dog, whoever needed you, would you need more courage? Do you need more safety? What What's the first word that would come up in your mind that you would need right there? Do you need more calm? What, what would you need? You mean if I was faced with, with an eye yes. situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what was missing at that time that you needed that you didn't have? I would say it's a two word. Isn't it? it would be it's okay. Okay. So, so then what will you do is the top of your head and you say, it is okay. Can I say it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then basically what you can do is that it's okay, I'm okay. So would you say I'm okay? Is that the worry behind that fear? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. So what, so you'll do what you'll do, you'll do pressure points like it's okay. It's okay. And then, and then you'll do the sequence basically. It's okay. And you'll keep telling your mind, it's okay. And then if another word comes up in your mind, and then sometimes we also do, you know, you can also carry on doing more points on your fingers where, where the nail band on each finger. And then on the side of the hand, we will say, for example, if you had like, it's okay. And, and, you know, the world is supporting me. Or if you were doing, if you were just tapping on calm, you will say, I have all the calm in the world. So this is something that you could do there and then, but you could also do it beforehand um, and you could practice this to calm your energy system down in order to actually get 
what you want basically so what it does is is it's acupuncture but, uh, without needles basically you're pressing on the meridians which we're actually aligning all the meridians and we actually also reverse what was ha what happened and and that state of of high anxiety and fear so we're reducing it so you could use whatever word would you would need at that time and then you will say okay well right now i need to be brave or right now i need calm and it's like more calm lots more calm more calm lots more calm obviously if this area of touching the eye is creating something then you wouldn't do it just in your case because that mm. is what we're working so you'll go straight here more calm more calm more calm mm. and then you'll carry on like this on your hands and then that will allow you to think clearly it would calm your whole energy body down and then you'll be able to move forward and or help someone if you needed to do something so that's something that uh that tapping can can help in that sense so you're desensitizing so what you're doing is you're putting a positive energy on top of the actual you know um fear so so those are techniques that you could actually sort of practice and use um you know on a day-to-day -day and and start using this at the same time um really helpful tip yeah yeah that's um you know because we always have our hands with us so, so you know thank god we have our hand so and uh and you know you used to work in school and uh and that's why i i help little children and do group um, mental health and, and wellness and that's what that's what we do we play with our hands we will it we literally tap you know and we tap on the teddy bears we, we do a lot of different um ways to relax the whole body so that we can put more uh more of what they need and very often kids what they want is it's interesting because they don't see themselves as clever so they want more clever so they'll tap on more clever more clever more clever more clever or they'll say more brave sometimes they'll say more friends or and then sometimes they'll say more happiness more happiness so and then they'll we just literally fill their battery of energy with a positive side of it and when you do that they are you know in a better, better place and they actually embrace and they actually walk you know with uh, with much more confidence because they have what they need in that battery so so it's quite interesting to see that um i'm trying to get it out there more into education um because but uh but this is why you know you have our, we all have our hands and you can very much use the pressure points and even just underneath your nose and underneath your mouth if something happened and you're in total fear you could straight away just do this, literally just do this. As you see the event unfolding in front of your eyes, literally you can do that. So so if you if you didn't know that many years ago, you know, you would have okay, held your your hands friends and and be there for your friends, but at the same time as the other hand, you could have done carry on doing the pressure points so that you could look after yourself too. You know <laughs> that that's what happened. It's like your we don't deal with our emotions and the emotion get trapped in the body. And when it gets trapped in the body, it doesn't know how to get out. The only way to get out will be to get, to make your heart beating fast or to make your stomach feeling sick, because that is the only way that at the moment your, your subconscious mind know how to release this. But if you start changing and using the pressure points or, you know, sending a color into your body, that is how you actually get rid of that, emotion that is trapped in your body or oh, there's other methods that i use that are even more efficient but it will take time for me to explain it today but that is something that you that that's what's happening and that's why people when they have their heart beating fast or they're feeling sick or they faint is our sub lovely subconscious mind who actually want to protect ourselves doesn't know how to clear this this big emotion luggage that we have inside and the only way to do it is to switch the whole system off and mm. that's why we faint but that doesn't help because when you wake up you still have it inside and so what we want to do is take those emotions out of your body that they're not helping anymore and then replace them with something else which is you know if it's happiness if it's um, calm if it's it's okay whatever it is and then your body will and your mind will learn how to deal with 
those emotions in a different way and then you actually feel lighter in that sense so um what's that feel like in your stomach now was that is this different than when we started lighter Lighter. yeah yeah that's the whole idea shifting that that was that emotion that is heavy that you carry make it lighter and lighter and lighter to the point where you actually don't feel it anymore Mm. Uh, and uh, and that that is a process obviously that you can't just do in a few minutes but it's you know it's good to know and it's good to tell all our listeners that there are so many different energy tools that can be used in order to change so you don't have to carry a fear for many years and having to adapt yourself in into that so Mm -hmm. um so if somebody was wearing white what would what would would you be okay or would you try to avoid seeing them or no white's okay but I just see it as like an almost an empty color an empty color Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. so so you like white I think the problem is because you know when when I'm faced with an eye situation Mm -hmm. it's like the panic just takes over yeah that's why it's better to work on it beforehand so mm-hmm. I can understand what you're suggesting because it's almost like you're faced with panic and so it's like a counteraction, isn't it, really? So whilst I'm panicking, I'm tapping and it's a distract, almost like a distracting measure. Yeah, it's a psychological uh, technique. But, you know, it's, it's psychological. We actually, we distract the mind, but then we're also putting what's missing at a time so that the body doesn't have to go into the further level into fainting it's mm. uh, so that's uh but it's better to try it when you're not in the trigger so that you can mm. practice and you can put where you need so then if in case you're in a trigger then you you are in a better place to actually deal with it mm. at the same time so, like practice watching bird box several times something like that you know? <laughs> if that's practice yes you can do that if that if that, tri- so if, that if that if that triggers something then uh you know i did uh i helped a little girl who wouldn't even go into um her lou- the lounge because the tv was on she could not watch anything on tv literally she, so she wouldn't even touch a remote control and and we we did the pressure points. We used some color therapy, and uh, and we and literally with with three sessions, she then got into the, walked into the lounge, held the remote control, and was starting watching. And what she was really scared of is that when you watch something on TV, you don't know what's going to be next, so you don't know what the next scene is going to be. So even but even watching a video film, she also still although she could control it and stop it, it was still like didn't know what was going to be next. So, you know, all those, all those little fears can have a big impact on people's life. And all I'm, I'm using is energy work. And by using energy in different ways, depending which different tools that, um, you know, you can use magnet, you can use pressure points, you can use colors, you can use a lot, all different. And also my little own formula, probably. Um, you shift this and, and then you can get on with your life. And that's that's the beauty about it. That's uh, so, and that's that's my passion. Talking about passion, let's talk about you. Let's talk about what you do. So, well, I am head of matchmaking at a dating agency in London. We work with professionals who are obviously single, um, and they've been really successful in their work lives, but not so in their love lives so how did you start with with the pandemic as it is it's getting more and more difficult for people to meet somebody in a traditional manner and i mean nobody can go out you know a lot of lots of people have turned to online dating and i think that's about worn everybody out so it's you know we're as i say a traditional matchmaker we take on people and we find them somebody to love um, how did you get into this? Because you were, you were teaching, you were working in school. That's right. I had a friend who, about five years ago, she went to a matchmaker and I'd never heard of, well, I knew they existed, you know, in other parts of the world. <laughs> I didn't realise they, they existed here in the UK. And I was quite cynical at the time about it. She, you know, she paid quite a lot of money. Um, and I was, oh, God, what are you doing that nonsense for? <laughs> 
And then about six months later, she got engaged and a year later they were married. So I wasn't quite so cynical after that. <laughs> and Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I decided to investigate, you know, what, what of being a matchmaker was. And I trained with a lady called Caroline Breeley, who at the time was training a lot of matchmakers in the UK and internationally. And it, I've gone full circle now because now I work with Caroline and we're partners in London. So, wow. Yeah, I know. I, I've met many years ago. I've met, um, I mean, actually, not that, not too long ago, actually. I met a, a very, a, quite an elderly lady and she, all her life, what she was doing was matchmaking. It was really interesting. And she had amazing stories and she met like really interesting people. We do. And, and it was so interesting. People. Amazing. And so, it's quite interesting because they always say to people, well, you know, if you try the online dating, and, you know, a lot of people have, and some people, you know, it's gone okay, but some people it really, it really hasn't. And it's very difficult because, you know, I had one guy, he rang up oh, about six months ago, and he said, oh, you know, what are the women like who you take on? You know, are they really desperate? <laughs> and I just laughed. And I said, that's the ID. That's what people think that is the ID. Oh, oh, oh. And, the... and I said to him, are you joking? The women that we take on are so successful in their field. You know, maybe they've got their own business. Maybe they're head of whatever it is. Maybe they're CEOs of wherever. This is the sort of caliber of women. That's, that, that is because you didn't. control yeah. their own lives. Because, you know, if, if you concentrate on your career, um, it takes an enormous amount of time. And, and you didn't, and also it's, it's a question of being at the right place at the right time to meet that person. And if that's not happening, then you need someone like you who would put the two together. Um, I think as well, because, you know, people are so, big, and especially in London, because our main clientele is in London. Um, I think one of the biggest problems is that people devote so much time to their working life that quite I mean we had a chap who we took on and he was really successful in his business he had a he was working in a hotel he was a family run hotel and he also had um leisure facilities which also he'd taken charge of and he was only 40 and I said to him you know are you are you sure you've got time to meet somebody said, oh yeah definitely this is why I've come to you I said okay that's fine so I found him somebody wonderful rang him up said, you know i've got this lady da -de da and he said oh i'm sorry but we've we've got problems at the moment the hotels um we've we've had a couple of managers leave and i need to find somebody to replace them it's not a good time so i said okay that's fine so i went back to the lady and i said you know i'm really sorry but the time is not right so then i found girl number two rang him again said you know, i found another lady oh we've got a problem with the electricity <laughs> okay girl number two Girl number three, I rang him again and I said, and this wonderful lady, don't be dumb. He said, oh, I don't really think so. I'm not very well. You know what I said? <laughs> I'm really sorry, but we can't do this. You know what you should I do? Gave, I gave him, I gave him a full refund. Do you know what you should have done? Send I it to me. Know. Send it to me first. I work on a field of commitment and then I'll send you the client back. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Because that's what it is. It's running away from, you know, consciously you want to meet someone, but sometimes subconsciously you have a fear of commitment, fear of meeting somebody. And then you just, you know, you, you create a different situation indirectly to avoid what you want. True. But when something is really important, you do find the time. So you do. You have to find the time. This is what you have to find about. You I did. Can you find the time? Or are you going to find the time? Because if not, don't pay your money because it's. You're it's true. You're, if it's really important, even if you have an electricity problem or whatever problem you have, you still will find some time, or or you actually will, they will, you know, will ring you and chase you up, say, okay, all those things happen. Now I have that time. I'm going to use that time. So there's always, you know, something. Uh, I um, I've done the opposite. I actually just. You know, I created my family, sort of, I built my family first and then built my business. So, um, you know, I did the, the opposite in that sense. So I had five girls and then, and then built my business. But, um, you know, those, those people, obviously, it, I totally understand that if you are so busy 
and you re it's really hard to meet someone and now with the pandemic that is is not easy because everything is online you can't they can't meet so that makes it harder to to have a, a proper conversation and and meeting up and that you apart from maybe going for a walk that's you know you're they really it's really I think do, do, do you find it makes it harder now I think it does make it harder but I think actually when you meet up with somebody and you're walking actually I think it lends itself to a, a much better atmosphere than you know when you're sitting in the pub because let's face it first dating is not pleasant everybody's everybody's stressed I mean we had, we had a chat quite a, a while ago and we'd set him up to go out with somebody and it was his first date and he rang me at 10 to 7 in the evening he was outside the pub where he was supposed to meet us and um, he said, well, you know what, I'm outside the pub. And I said, well, is, is there a problem? Is she wrong to say she's not coming? And he said, oh, no, I can, I can see her. She's inside the pub. And I said, well, what's the problem then? And he said, I don't know if I can, I can go in. And so I had to give him a pet talk. And so, no, seriously. Okay, now we're going 35. 35. Yeah, well, you're surrounded by fear too, you know. It oh, is scary. Oh, it's oh, scary oh, to meet someone oh, that you're, that you, you know, you don't know and... And that, and also, it's not just that you don't know, but you do know why you're meeting that person. Mm -hmm. So that's even more personal. So, but mm -hmm. that the whole idea around it, and we could do a session on, on on fear, and you know, we could literally dismantle the fear around it. Is all you're doing is putting is putting two people and connecting them together. That's what it is. And and if it hasn't happened naturally, you're just doing it through through your work and that's what it is and there's nothing you know people sometimes have that fear around it too saying oh that's how I need to do it but uh but great excellent excellent work uh how can they find you if anyone out there is single and want to meet April for matchmaking where okay. can they find our, you our company is called mutual attraction um and my email is april at mutualattraction.co.uk. Excellent. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, April, for um, coming on to the, um, to the show today. Uh, you're listening to Lauren Rosenberg, uh, Fear Buster. Thank you very much for coming today. And we're going to talk next week, uh, different fear. And so looking forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>